What about the fraction 3 sixths? And we want to do what we call simplifying that fraction. Now, first of all, what is 3 sixths, right? Let's take a look at what that actually is. Here's 1 sixth, 2 sixth, 3 sixth. This is 3 sixths of a fraction. Now, let me ask you something. If I turn it maybe this way, it might help see it a little better. What does that actually look like to you? Well, 3 sixths, 1 sixth, 2 sixths, 3 sixths, here it is. But what does it look like? It looks exactly like half of a pizza. In fact, I can hold up, this is the fraction 1 half, I can hold up the fraction 1 half and they look and they are exactly the same thing. So we can see from these magnets that the fraction 1 half of a pizza is exactly the same as 3 sixths. Why is that, by the way? Because if you have a pizza that you cut into six pieces, but I take three of the pieces, then I've taken half of the pizza. So we have to have a way, or we want to have a way, to take any fraction that we uh, have and simplify it into a simpler version of itself. So let me move this down below, right here, and let's try to do that. The way you do it is the following. Put a little equal sign here, rewrite the fraction, 3 sixths. Now, is there a number that you can think of where you could divide the top and the bottom and it would go evenly? Could you divide by two, for instance? Well, six divided by two is a, is a, goes a whole number of times, but what is three divided by two? Three divided by two does not divide evenly. So we can't divide by two because it, we can't do it to the top and to the bottom. What about the number three? What if we choose to divide the top of this fraction by the number three and also the bottom of the fraction by the number three? What would happen? Well, three divided by three on the top is just one, and six divided by three on the bottom is just two. So what we have said here is that the fraction one half here, which is represented here, is exactly the same thing as the fraction three sixths. And of course you can see from these that this is true. So let me rotate this just to kind of get them out of the way a little bit more and we'll leave it up on the board. What you would say is that this is the simplified form or the lowest terms form of the original fraction. It's important for you to understand that the fractions mean the same thing. 3 sixths really does mean exactly the same amount of stuff as 1 half. But when we give answers in problems, we usually want to show the simplified version of the fraction into lowest terms. Like in general, when we solve problems, we always want to simplify as the final step to get the fraction into lowest terms into simplest form. All right, so now that we have the idea down, let's go conquer the next one. Let's say we have the fraction 4 twelfths. And I'm going to ask you, is this in lowest terms or can we simplify this into lowest terms? Well, what you need to be asking yourself is can I divide the top and bottom by something? Anything I can think of. And the answer is yes. I noticed that this is a whole number, uh, an even number I mean. This is a 4 and this is a 12. So actually, I can take this 4 twelfths, right? And I can, because I know that they're both even numbers, I can divide the top by 2 and I can divide the bottom by 2, right? What will I get? I'll get 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 12 divided by 2 is 6. So I'll get a new fraction, and we're saying that the fraction 2 sixth is exactly the same thing as the fraction 4 twelfths. But then I look at this and I say, well, wait a minute, is this in simplest form? And I say, no, it's not, because I could still divide the top again by 2, and I could divide the bottom again by 2. So let's do that. 2 sixth. Let's see what happens when I divide the top by 2 and the bottom by 2. What do I get? Right? 2 divided by 2 is, on the top, uh, 1. And 6 divided by 2 on the bottom is 3. And so I get an answer of 1 third. So what we're saying, and then we ask ourselves, is this the final answer? Is this the simplified form? 1 divided by 3, or 1 over 3. I cannot simplify this further because I cannot divide top and bottom by something to make it simpler. I can't do it because even if I divide by 3, that would work down here, but I can't divide this by 3. It doesn't go evenly. So I'm done. I stop at the fraction 1 third. All right, so let's see, first of all, if this is even true. Let's take a look at the fraction 4 twelfths here. Here's 1 twelfth, here's 2 twelfths, here's 3 twelfths, here's 4 twelfths. So this is the actual amount of pizza. Notice the slices when you cut a pizza into 12 pieces, pretty small, 4 twelfths. Now let's go all the way to the answer. We said the answer was 1 third. We're saying that these two fractions, even though they look totally different, actually represent the same thing. 1 third is exactly the same thing as 4 twelfths. So that's why they're equivalent. All of the numbers in the fraction look totally different, but the actual fraction means the same thing. Now notice that first we divided by 2 
to get this, and then we simplified further in a second step to get this. Let's see what this is equal to. What is 2 sixths here? So let me go over here, 2 sixths. Here's 1 sixth, here's 2 sixths because these are now cut into six larger slices, there's two sixths. And I think you can see that one third is exactly the same as two sixths, which is also exactly the same as four twelfths. So you see what's going on here? When I divide this number uh, fraction by two on the top and two on the bottom, I get this. This fraction means exactly the same as this, but it's not fully simplified yet. But when we divide by two again, we get to this, which again means exactly the same amount of pizza, but this is fully simplified because I cannot further divide this anymore. So when you see a teacher or a test tell you, simplify the fraction into lowest terms, you want to keep simplifying as far or as much as you need to in order to get to a point where you can't do it anymore, where you can't do it anymore. Now, one more thing I want to show you before we move on. Let me, uh, let's see here. Yeah, I guess I'll just leave it up here, just like this. Let's do the problem again, 4 twelfths. All right. What we did is we divided by two, got an answer. Then we divided by two again and got an answer. But if you notice carefully, you can actually divide by two. Of course we did that, but actually there's something else that divides into top and bottom here. What if I divide by four? Divide this by four and also this by four. Divide top by four, divide bottom by four. What will I get? Four divided by four is one and 12 divided by four is three. Notice I get exactly the same answer. One third is the final answer to this problem. And I get the same answer no matter how I simplify the problem. So here's the bottom line when you're simplifying fractions. What you want to do is try to divide the top and bottom by the largest thing possible that you can do. Because if you do that, then you can get to the simplified answer in only one step. But a lot of times, we don't often think of the best number to divide by, but we might notice that they're even numbers and we can divide by two. And if you divide by two, then you get to an intermediate answer and then you divide by two again. So I guess my point is, I don't really care what you divide by. As long as it's legal, I'm okay with it. Some teachers are gonna get mad at you if you take more than one step to get to the answer. I'm not gonna be like that. I don't care. I just want you to get to the right answer. So if you happen to see that you can divide by four, awesome, do it. If you're not sure about that, but you know you can divide by two, then just do it multiple times. That's fine with me too. To me, as long as you get the right answer, I'm, I'm happy. All right, let's take a look at the problem two tenths. How do we simplify that? We rewrite the fraction as two over 10. What can we divide top and bottom by? Well, I can divide the top and the bottom by two because both are divisible by two. Two divided by two is one. 10 divided by two is five. So what we're claiming is that the fraction 1 fifth is exactly the same thing as 2 tenths. So what we want to do is see if that's true. Here's 1 tenth, here's 2 tenths. And then we're asking ourselves, is the fraction 1 fifth here the same? And of course we can pick it up and put it right on top. You can see that they're not just close, they're not just kinda sorta equal, they're exactly the same thing. 2 tenths is exactly the same thing as 1 fifth. So for the rest of the problems, we're not going to use the magnets, but I just want you to make sure that, that you know that you can divide by whatever you want as long as it's legal. And if you get to a place where you can still simplify it further, then just do it again. If it takes more than one step, then all it means is there was probably something larger that you could have divided by, but it, it's not like wrong if you take more than one step. I'm just telling you there's more than one path to the answer. In math, I think I've been telling you over and over, there's almost always more than one way to get to an answer. So when I'm doing these problems for you, you might see a different way and a different path to the answer, and that is okay. Let's take a look at the problem 9 18ths. Let's simplify 9 18ths. This is an excellent example of that. All right, what can we do? Well, we can divide the top and bottom by three. How do I know? Because I just know that this is divisible by three and this is divisible by three, so let's do it. Divide top by three, divide bottom by three. What do I get? Nine divided by three is three. 18 divided by three is six. Now I'm gonna circle this answer, but then I notice, well, wait a minute. I can further simplify this further, three sixths. I can divide it by three again. Okay, I can divide it by three again. So I get to an intermediate answer, but this is not fully simplified. I can divide again by three. Three divided by three is one. Six divided by three is two. And so the answer is finally one half because I cannot simplify or divide this any further to make it any simpler. And it took kind of like two steps to get to here, step number one, and then for 
here to get to step number two. But let's really quickly just do the whole thing again, 9 18 Notice that it took two steps, so there must be something even bigger I can divide by if I happen to see it. What about if I divide the top by 9 and the bottom by 9? Now you might not have seen that, but if you do, you know that 9 divided by 9 is 1. 18 divided by 9 is 2 because 2 times 9 is 18, and you can see you get exactly the same answer. So I guess I'm going to stop solving all of these problems two ways. What I want you to know is that I don't care if you see the perfect thing to divide by. The best thing to divide by here would be 9 because it only gives one step. But oftentimes I don't really see that either, and it might take more than one step to get there. So as we go forward, if it takes me a different number of steps than you, fine. There's more than one way to do these problems. All right. So let's do the next problem. What about 4 twentieths? Right? So I'm going to write 4 twentieths. Now I know right away I could divide by 4 and then divide by 4 because I know that they're both divisible. But let's just say that I didn't notice that. I know these are even numbers, so I divide by 2 and by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 20 divided by 2 is 10. But then I notice, oh man, I, I can do it again because these are again even numbers. So I write two tenths down again. And then I say, all right, I'm going to divide the top by two and the bottom by two. Two divided by two is one. Ten divided by two is five. And the answer is one fifth. If I did not divide by two and then by two again, what if I noticed and started off by just dividing by four? Well, four divided by four is one. 20 divided by 4 is 5. I would go straight from here to the answer in one step if I choose the best thing to divide by. But to me, as long as you get the right answer, that's fine. I'm totally fine with that. All right, enough of that. Let's take a look at 12 fifteenths. Let's simplify that. Rewrite the fraction, put the 12 and the fifteenths, draw your longer fraction bar. What can I divide this by? Well, I know I can divide by 3 and by 3. So put up here, I'm going to divide by 3, divide by 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4, because 4 times 3 is 12. 15 divided by 3 is 5, because 5 times 3 is 15. So the answer is 4 fifths. And I can't simplify this further, because I can't divide top and bottom by something to make that any simpler. All right, what about the uh, uh, problem 8 twentieths? Right? Now, I know that there are probably other things I can divide by, but let's just say I don't know, and I just notice that these are even numbers. Right? So I'll just divide this by 2, because I know they're both even. That's definitely going to work. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 20 divided by 2 is 10. And then I say, is this simplified? Nope, because it's still even numbers. So I just write the 4 tenths again, and I do the same thing again. I can divide both by 2. Divide the top by 2, divide the bottom by 2. I get 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. And so the answer is 2 fifths. There is nothing I can divide further to make this simpler. Now, uh, I, I said I won't do this for every problem, but I can't resist doing it here. Let's rework the problem again. What else could I divide by? What else is divisible here? Actually, you can divide the top and bottom by 4. You may not see that right away, but 8 divided by 4 is 2. 20 divided by 4 is what? 5, because 5 times 4 is 20. So you see, you get the same answer. It's just, if I pick the bigger number, uh, which is, by the way, called the greatest common factor, that's why we learned what the greatest common factor was, because if you always divide by the greatest common factor, then you'll get the simplified fraction in the fewest number of steps. So if you happen to see that you can divide by 4, then you're going to get the answer in one step. But if you're like the rest of us, who doesn't always see that, just divide by 2 because it's even, divide by 2 again, maybe you have to do it twice, but then you always get the right answer with no problems. All right, let's take a look at our final few problems. We'll take a look at 14 eighteenths. What can I divide top and bottom by? Well, I can see right away that these are even numbers, so I'm going to divide the top and the bottom by 2. Top by 2, bottom by 2. What is 14 divided by 2? 7, because 7 times 2 is 14. What is 18 divided by 2? 9, because 9 times 2 is 18. The answer is 7 ninths. I cannot divide top and bottom by anything further to make this any simpler, so I am done. All right, only two more problems. What about 26 28ths? Right? 26 28ths. 
Again, I see that they're both even numbers. So write 26 on the top, 28 on the bottom. And I'm going to divide the top and the bottom by 2. Now, these are a little tricky because they're larger numbers, right? But when you think about it, I think you could convince yourself that 26 divided by 2 is 13, and 28 divided by 2 is 14. And if you're not sure about that, you can go off to the side, 26 divided by 2, and go through it all, and you'll get 13, and do this one, and you'll get 14. And I know we've covered all that in the past, so at some point I have to start assuming that you know how to divide numbers, which we've done before. You get 13 fourteenths here, and these are the final answers. I cannot simplify that any further. All right. And then finally, here is our last problem. What about 24 and 96? So I write 24 again and 96 again. Now, I don't really know exactly what the best number is to divide by, but I know that they're both even. So I'm going to divide the top in, uh, by 2, and I'll, I'll divide again the bottom by 2. Now, you might need to go off to the side and take 24, divide by 2, and, and so on to get the answer. But I think you can convince yourself that this is 12 on the top, because 12 times 2 is 24. And then 96 divided by 2 is actually going to work out to be 48. You take 96, divide by 2, we've done all that many times, you get an answer of 48. But this is not perfectly simplified, because these are, again, uh, even numbers. So what will I do? I will divide the top and bottom uh, by 2 again. Right? What am I going to get? 12 divided by 2 is 6, and 48 divided by 2, when you do the division and work that out, you'll get 24. These, again, are even numbers. So 6 24 ths here I'm going to be a little bit smarter. I can divide by 2 again because there are even numbers. But I realize now that I can just divide this by 6. I can divide this by 6 and this by 6 because they're both divisible by 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1. 24 divided by 6 is 4 because 4 times 6 is 24. So the answer is 1 fourth. So notice that we had like a multi-step thing going on here. We divided one time to get this thing, and then we divided another time to get this thing, and then, I guess I'll do it like this, another time to get this. So we did one division, two division, three divisions. And it always worked out, but it was multiple steps. So when you have multiple steps like that to simplify a fraction, all it means is that there was a larger number I could divide top and bottom by um, to get exactly the same thing. What do you think that is? I think I could actually probably divide the top and bottom by 24. What I'm claiming is if I take the top and the bottom and divide by 24, and divide by 24, what will I get? The answer is 1 fourth, because 4 times 24 is 96. Let's check it. 24 times 4. 4 times 4, 16, carry the 1. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9. So 4 times 24 is this, and 1 times 24 is this. So if I had looked at this problem and I was a human calculator, which I'm not, but if I was, I could say, oh, I'll just divide top and bottom by 24, and I'll get the answer in one step. But nobody can do that. I mean, I don't think anybody, most people cannot do that. So instead, do it like the rest of us. Well, I'll divide by 2 and get this. Now, actually, we divided by 2 again, but here, if you're clever, you can see that you can divide top and bottom by 12, because 12 divided by 12 is 1, 48 divided by 12 is 4. Remember from multiplication, 12 times 4 is 48. So you might have been able to shortcut a couple steps by dividing top and bottom by 12 here, but if you didn't think of it, divide by 2 again, and then here we divide it by 6, and so on, and get the final answer of 1 fourth. So simplifying fractions is really important because when we add or subtract or multiply or divide fractions, the answer we get We'll always have to check if it's in lowest terms. And if it's not, we'll have to do this process to get it into lowest terms. Don't forget what's happening. What we're saying is 2496 of a pizza is exactly the same amount of food as 12 48ths of a pizza, or 12 slices out of 48, which is exactly the same thing as 6 slices out of 24, which is exactly the same thing as 1 slice out of 4. They all represent the same thing, but they're just written slightly different. That's all that that means. So I'd like you to solve all of these yourself. Follow me on to part two. We'll wrap up our skills with simplifying fractions. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.